Welcome to the CocoVid costume edition of the 1920s Tailcoat Draft Along. This is based off of a Master Designer 1920s Tailcoat Draft, and we will see how quickly we can get through this as a speedy uh, race towards the end. There is a badge available for this particular video. If you have been playing along, along those lines, stay tuned for more. For our speedy contestant here, we have a tailor who has been drafting for decades and has used the 1950s version of the Master Designer Tailcoat Draft several times before. We'll see how she fares with this 1920s version of an earlier time. There she is, waving to the audience there. Interesting choice to go with a very thick marker for drafting. Normally, you would go with uh, chalk or a very sharp pencil, but I figure she's probably can uh, pandering to the crowd so that you can see this, um, this very small video. She is also using a clear plastic ruler to be able to have a square edge away from the edge this is not a rookie move right here, folks. She has enough room off the side knowing that the draft will go off from that center back line into a vent. And straight off the bat, using a Taylor Square, she's going to have to clean that thing later, folks. With all of this marker on it, her fingers most likely too. Starting off with the straight center back line, she seems quite satisfied with that particular line there. And squaring off the screen. What a rookie move there, folks. You won't see this kind of thing in most videos. She's contemplating her options and reading the directions while looking at the uh, pic picture of the draft itself. On the left there, on the right she has pinned up on the wall, and she is showing off her, yes, it is a Taylor Square. She's going to be using the fourth section of the Taylor Square rather than using a calculator. This will save her a great deal of time. Highly recommended to go with the, oh, oh, she's going with the thirds rather than the fourths. And she's going to be using that point and the marked down of the fourths of the full chest measurement to reach her next point. And this is the point of a Taylor Square right here as opposed to a Carpenter Square. Carpenter Squares are all nice and good, but this is basically a slide rule move from a Taylor's perspective. This is, once again, using the thirds there as well. I think she's probably using sixths to go down as well. Hard to tell from this angle though, folks. Here we go, and she's off, by which I mean off the screen, <laughs> with her squared corner up in that corner up there. She's consulting both the diagram and the directions right there, the step-by-step, -step, and she is squaring out. Look at this, folks. We are getting to the point where the draft starts to look like all of the levels that you get to see, the, the main cross sections that are your starting points of anatomical proportions. Interesting choice here, folks, that she has it up vertically on a wall. Normally this is done on a table with the center back towards you so that you can share the table space and working horizontally across the table. It must be a bit of a struggle here, folks, to be able to keep those rulers against the wall at a vertical axis. Oh, and she has lost her cap. This is just the most annoying thing. Poor thing. How will we know what who she's affiliated with if she doesn't have her bandana <laughs> demarking her particular jockey position? So here we go. And she's back in the races after that minor setback there. She is off and running again with her proportional squaring out. 
carefully marking her points there so that she can find herself back in this particular draft. This is an earlier version of it, so it has letters rather than all of the, the very wonderful numbers of the 50s version. And here we are. Looks like we're going to get a square, which may not be completely square, considering... Oh, maybe not. We're still working on it. Oh, what a face. But apparently she is disappointed with that particular... Oh, rookie move! Her directions are in the way of her draft, and since they are pinned up vertically, it's hard to see. But she has moved it out of the way enough to be able to put the vent in and still be at easy eye level reading. Now, she does have her diagram and her directions on two sides of this particular draft, which is unusual and potentially a time waster right here. So, here she goes, extending that center back line down, as well as adding the kick out for the vent and that ever important extra little bit coming up from the vent to be able to hold on to it and make a vent that doesn't want to gape open super important there folks easy to miss if you aren't used to it and here we go so this is our first indication that this particular draft is including all allowances so you have your seam allowances in there which are very small this is not meant to have theatrical allowances in here. She will very likely, having a theatrical background, add some more allowances as this progresses. Looks like she's found her spot in the directions here and where to find it on the diagram. And off she goes with another lovely mark there. Well labeled, easy to even see from here, which is very much pandering to an audience. They don't necessarily have to be that big, but then again, considering her marking implement, that seems rather useful to be able to write in giant, giant letters with a giant, giant marker instead of a uh, delicate line and pencil like you normally would see in this kind of thing. But from here, those lines are thick enough to be seen, and that is useful for our audience here good for entertainment value rather than particularly accuracy. Now she's squaring out, she's got her fashionable waistline and her natural waistline there, and we'll see the difference between those later on in this draft, most likely. And we're getting a hemline there as well for the length of the tails in the back, which should, in theory, get down to almost the knee length, if not a little bit shorter than that. Still squaring out to be able to get to her full width there. This looks like she is struggling, folks, with a bit of gravity in that particular Taylor square, that it may not want to stay as square and flat as usual. Oh, see that face. Oh, her line has gone off. But worry not, folks. She has ticked out the bit that isn't accurate. And she has drawn on a new line that is nice and flat. And back to the direction she goes. And she is not keeping her spot with a paperclip. This seems like a unfortunate choice on her part. She may have to lose her spot in the the directions multiple times and she since she is working with a corpulent figure she is drafting out further to be able to get to the marks that she is trying to get to this is sometimes necessary and sometimes a little bit more necessary considering the width of the and length of the ruler that is being used but having a longer Taylor square is helpful in that you don't have to square out quite as much, but it does make it heavier to move around. So your mileage may vary, but the looks like she is getting more and more of her letters and marks in here, as well as back to reading directions. She is losing some time here, folks, due to her lack of a paperclip. Now, or a post-it note to be able to keep track of where she is in this draft. This is a major downside of the 20s version as opposed to the 50s version. In the 50s version, since it is in numerical order, she has an easier time keeping track, but it looks like she's found her spot again, folks, and she is moving on from B and I and whatever that tiny little letter is there that we cannot actually see. Here we go, and it looks like she has another mark there. Very carefully marked out. And she's consulting the directions yet again. 
and squaring up and down to make sure that she is squaring up and down from the correct point and not missing any particular bits. Once again, working off the screen, quite the rookie move here. Hopefully we will see that in a little bit and she will realize that uh, she is off screen. Now, here we go back to the diagram and finding where the letters are that they are talking about and back to the directions and back and forth and it looks like she might score look at that there we go all right she has found where she's going and using the measurement side of the taylor square on the one side you have the proportionate measurements and on the other side you have the just regular measuring out one inch two inch and so forth with the normal scale so on the back you have the usual scale of uh the multiples of two and four and 16 on the one side and look at her go it looks like she's making some good progress on that back as well as plotting out the major points of the circumferential proportionate markings. It doesn't look like much. Now, folks, these squares are very important, though, to be able to figure out the markings for all of the curves later. Hang in there for the more exciting part coming up. Here we go, folks. She is once again using the proportionate side of the Taylor Square. Can you imagine if she was wasting her time with a calculator and strange decimal points? There are links below to non-associated uh, Taylor Squares that you can get for yourself. Completely unsponsored for this particular channel, but a tool well worth using. And here we go. She is once again... <laughs> Working off of the screen, most likely on the center back neck proportion. But I hope that she will figure out soon that we are off the screen and will be very bored until she moves that. Once again, back to the directions and back to the, the diagram. And she has found her spot and has marked yet another one. And off to the races she goes. Once again, back to the directions. This bit is a bit tricky, folks. And she is back to the diagram and back and forth. And where will she find the next point? And the next point is figuring out, looks like the arm's eye. The arm's eye may be next with all of these points that she's putting towards that middle of the diagram here. And we are seeing her use the non-proportionate side of the ruler here to use as just a regular marker. You can also use a clear plastic ruler, but that would require setting down her Taylor square, which she is using to square as the next point there. So it can be very useful to keep your plastic ruler nearby, but at the same time, there's nothing wrong with using the old school Taylor square as a regular ruler is as well. And back to the diagram. Looks like she has found her mark. And here we go. I think we were right there looking at a shoulder line there to get the, the angles of the back shoulder versus the front shoulder, which this is a lovely marker of a period draft as opposed to a more modern one, considering how sloped the back is compared to the front of the shoulder. And this is largely because the front of the shoulder will go further back to the back to create that beautiful fiddle back that we have grown to know and love. It looks like she is contemplating her work and whether those angles are correct and reading the directions to see where her next move might be. Much thought is going into that as well as going back to the the diagram to see where those points are referring to. And back and forth between the diagram and the full draft there. And it looks like she has found her bottom point for the back shoulder blade there, and the back shoulder seam. And very bold choice there, since she apparently has not brought her uh, French Oh, there she goes. She has finally discovered that we could not see what she was doing up at the back neckline as well as at the shoulders and has moved our view to be able to see it better. So the bold move with the back shoulder has the, that curve 
that it looks as though she did not bring a French squ- uh, French ruler or arm's eye curve ruler back from work with her, so I think she is free-handing this whole thing. How about that for an old school drafting? Building her rock of eye since this is practice anyway. High stakes with the curves being drawn on this way, but with all of these points of reference and her Taylor Square to help, this will be a great educational opportunity towards making a mock-up and learning and building her rock of eye of making those curves more accurate with every time she tries it. And it looks like she's getting that front of the shoulder point here, which seems very short in between the two, which may largely be come from the level of the large proportion of this particular figure that was chosen and there she goes quite the bold arms eye move there for the front of the arms eye and it looks like she is just going for it going for it folks into the back of the arms eye there and a little bit of seam allowance there to run into it parallel to where it came up on the other side there and voila we have our first try at an arms eye and it is and the crowd goes wild. Time will tell whether this will be an accurate portrayal of this particular arm's eye, but that is one of those things that oftentimes gets changed in a mock-up anyway. So here we go. On we go with the back, the shaping the back and the center back, as well as adding the vent of the center back piece here. Very important to have that extra bit of of paper that she left at the beginning and this is paying off this strategy right here and we have an appearance of a cat must on the field of play <laughs> play being the operative word here some appeasements of the feline gods there and she is back to work marking her center back there with a very dramatic fiddle back and a slight difference in the skirt back. This is one of those places that you will see a d major difference in the corpulent figure as opposed to a, a standard regular figure of a slimmer fellow here. You need more space for the butt. And so the angle of the back piece here, instead of being completely straight, has more fullness towards the bottom, which makes for a nice optical illusion as well as giving a, just enough space for the butt without looking particularly shocking. This is a very smart move on this particular draft to be able to eke in just a little bit extra of beautiful style lines as well as enough space for the human body. What a concept, folks. Not one that you run into all that often here. Using the shoulder line there to be able to extrapolate the curve of the fiddle back is not a common thing that you run into, but it is an interesting aspect of this particular draft. and. Away she goes, using that long arm of, of the Taylor Square to find yet another point on the line. And once again, folks, she is checking her directions to make sure that she has the right ratios to be able to find a good line to mark off of. She looks quite dissatisfied with that particular line. I believe that was probably supposed to be a straight reference line, but that looks like a bold fiddle back to me right there. Likely going to need a little bit of smoothing and so forth in the final version. Not the most beautiful curve known to man, but considering the materials being used and the very thick marker, ah, not too bad. She could probably use a nice hip curve there, but look at that shoulder curve. Now that is a stunning example of the 20s curve of that particular shoulder and shows off the suppleness of the wool that would be used to get that curve and accommodate the beautiful shoulder pads that would sit that far out on that shoulder there. 
It also curves very beautifully into the back of the shoulder. And she is boldly going forth into the side back curve there of that beautiful fiddle back. Much more successful with that one than the one before, that's for sure. And now she is checking the directions once again and referencing back and forth between the directions and the diagram. And a little bit of a marker wiggle as a indicator of thought. Who knew that thought was in her head? Drafting out further out so that she has enough space to be able to start marking out the front. How, what an exciting occurrence. We are getting there, getting close to thinghood of at least one part of this particular draft is actually ready for mock-up, more or less, with a little bit of cleaning up on that back fiddle back there. And she is once again marking out and squaring out that particular line, fighting a bit of gravity there as the Taylor Square wants to dip down. She is using, once again, the proportionate and scale side of the drafting ruler to find that front of her coat and marked it quite clearly there with a tiny little letter. And she is finishing out that side back piece by marking down to the fashionable waistline, which is below the, the natural waistline, which is why it has to come back out again for that particular curve. Same with that side seam there, where it curves out and back and down to make that waist look all that much smaller, as well as having beautiful curves to be able to accentuate all of those lovely lines there. Bold moves. Oh, she has corrected her line there. Some tick marks through the old sad one there. Much better with the, the corrected version. Good call. And off she goes. With that side part there, we have most of the back part of the front piece, which is the most important part of the jacket in a lot of different ways. Making some bold lines and contemplating the diagram to make sure that all of the proportions look about right compared to the example of the draft itself. This is really good for catching any big mistakes. Very, very useful. Once again, going back for the proportionate side, this time in the sixths, which will save a whole lot of time compared to a calculator, that's for sure. We are getting close to having a front here, guys. This is very exciting that she is marking out that center front portion there. Now keep in mind this does include seam allowance, although very small ones. And she's creating a guideline so that we may have a bottom to our lovely front piece here. Fighting a little bit with the marker. And boy, are her hands turning green, along with the ruler itself. There's going to be a lot of washing after this with some dish soap, I believe. Carefully marking her letters so that she can find them later and reference them as she moves along. And she's back to the directions and reading along, very still in her thought. And back to the diagram to make sure that she is going in the right direction and finding where she, they are talking about it. If she had put them next to each other when she had started, perhaps she would save some time here. And, oh, nope, still not quite sure as to what they are discussing there. So she is back to the directions to make sure that she has the right numbers, going to the right place, and facing the right directions. And she's off again, folks. From that point, it looks like she is going to mark out the neckline and potentially a gorge line. This is very exciting. We may have a roll line soon, as well as 
with this particular draft, a collar point dart. The collar point dart is very useful, especially in, in corpulent and in stout drafts. And she is once again using this, the twelfths of the Taylor Square here. To mark out that front neck line and have that in proportion with the rest of the draft. And switching to the two scale side of the ruler because she wants to mark out an inches measurement. And for those who are wondering, this is an English measurement draft. If she was using a metric measurement draft, there are metric versions of Taylor Squares available. This is very useful for if you're using a particular... Oh, look at that bold neckline right there! That is a, a beautiful line there, even without a curved ruler. For those of you familiar with a particular course of drafting book, there are some very useful metric Taylor's Squares available. I may do a video on that at some point as well. And here we go! We have a potential row line right there! Very exciting! With the start of the, the gorge line dart one side down. Soon we may be getting a lapel. How exciting! And we have some more points on there. It's getting a bit complicated in there, folks. And we have the other side of the gorge line dart. How beautiful is that, folks? Something that will definitely have to be trued at a later date, though. As with most darts and drafts, especially ones that are hand-drawn like this. And considering back and forth between my draft and the example draft. And making sure that all of those are proportionate and at the right angles to each other. Oh, there is some thought. She is contemplating the difference here between that particular gorge line and making sure that that actually makes sense. With the gorge line dart as well as where the lapel is going to go. Sorry, folks, we were having some technical difficulties with relation to memory storage. Unfortunately, our cameraman has missed part of the lapel. She looks very unhappy with that particular turn of events, with missing the dart and the bottom formation of our front part here. But onward to the skirt of the coat. She is contemplating her tools and marking where she's going next. Getting that line from point to point here. And she is off the screen. <laughs> Down creating that curve in the bottom bit by hand, naturally, and adding the extra vent allowance there so that you don't end up with any kind of drooping. Very important. And the extra angle heading out. Since this is a corpulent figure and you will need to have that extra space to get over the butt. It looks like she is contemplating the angle of the screen there and oh she has left us as a done draft there from all of the major points thank you for coming today folks and watching this particular draft along i hope you enjoyed it and until next time this is this channel